And the award goes to Robin Maiee. <laughs> I want to, um, well, it's so overwhelming. Um, so many mahalos. I want to send my mahalo to the foundation, to the IRC, and to the senators who worked so tirelessly with the IRC to have help come to us. Um, I left industry because I um, didn't feel, I left industry because I didn't feel that I would make it. And so I did something else for a long time. And then we decided that we wanted to go back into industry six years ago. And we opened up this restaurant called FET, which is our baby with my husband, Chuck. And, um, <laughs> We wanted to open up a restaurant, the restaurant that I wanted to work in, um, when I felt that I wanted to give more money to our workers, I wanted to provide maternity leave, I wanted to give health insurance to everyone. I thought, why is our industry the only industry that doesn't have normal things? I want to thank my parents, Jennifer and Alan, for instilling tenacity, grit, and grace. I want to thank my brother and my sister for coming all this way. I want to thank the FET Ohana for their tireless and dedicated work. And I want to thank all of our guests for supporting us and for just cheering us on through everything. And... I want to thank our kick-ass chef de cuisine, Emily Iguchi. We tell our cooks that you have two mamas in the kitchen, and we're so lucky to have her. And lastly, I want to thank Chuck, my husband. This is our baby. It doesn't matter if we don't have actual babies. That is our baby, and I love you. Hi, I'm Robin Maii in Kapolei, Hawaii. This is the first Taste America event in the state of Hawaii, and we are so thrilled to be a part of it. Chef Bao Tran from Mad Bene, who is hosting the event, and we are from FET, and we're doing a collaboration dinner. So, very exciting, super happy to be here. ACF Chefs Forum. Now, more than ever, it's important for culinarians to connect, to share, and to offer inspiration and mentorship, which is exactly why we're excited to have experts here with information just for you, the leaders and future leaders of the food service industry. I'm Jackie Pressinger, American Culinary Federation's Director of Strategic Partnerships, and on behalf of ACF, one of our, and one of our fabulous partners, the Hawaii Culinary Education Foundation, we are delighted to welcome you to today's very special presentation live from Hawaii as we celebrate our award-winning featured chef from the Aloha State. We wanna hear from you, so please use the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen to submit questions to our guest chef and use the chat function to collaborate with other chefs and culinary students across the country. Let's get that discussion going in the chat. If you haven't already, please let us know where you're tuning in from today. 
a big thank you to Haley Madsen Mathis, the executive director of the nonprofit Hawaii Culinary Education Foundation. The foundation's mission is to provide Hawaii's culinary students and chefs access to cutting edge knowledge through a variety of programs with local, national, and international chefs and food experts. In her role, Haley coordinates partnerships between working chef mentors and culinary students and educators, developing educational programming designed to expand culinary knowledge beyond the classroom and professional kitchen. Her work encompasses six Hawaii community colleges and over 30 high school programs and professional chef training. Haley has also served as the 2018 president of La Dames de Scaffier International and is the co-owner of a fourth generation Kansas family farm and ranch. We're so glad to partner with HCEF and appreciate this learning opportunity brought to us in collaboration with ACF. We're truly honored. And now I'd like to welcome Haley to let us know a little bit more about HCEF introduce, and to introduce Chef Robin Maii. Thanks so much, Haley. Aloha and, and welcome. Thank you so much, Jackie. And we're pleased to collaborate with, H, with, with ACF on this program. It is our pleasure to join you today. The Hawaii Culinary Education Foundation has been creating culinary educational programming for culinary students and professionals since 1998. HCEF is dedicated to the support and development of culinary training. Our goal is raising and elevating the culinary bar through education. I am pleased to share with you one of our outstanding Hawaii chefs. Chef Robin Maii as was born and raised in Honolulu. And in 2015, she opened the award-winning FET restaurant. Chef was recognized this year as the 2022 James Beard Award winner for the Best Chef Northwest and Pacific category, becoming the first woman of Hawaiian ancestry to win this honor. Chef Robin earned her culinary and pastry arts degrees from Kapiolani Community College here in Honolulu, and she began her culinary adventure at Honolulu's 3660 On the Rise and continued by working at Padovani's Bistro and Wine Bar. In 1998, Robin left Hawaii to earn a master's degree in food studies from New York University. Chef Robin worked in New York City at top-rated restaurants Union Pacific, and the Waldorf Astoria Hotel Pastry Banquet Pastry Kitchen. She worked for Gourmet Magazine, Kitchen Arts and Letters Bookstore, and established and taught culinary programs at the Art Institute of New York City and Cooney's Kingsborough Community College. She has been a cookbook judge for the prestigious James Beard Award Foundation since 2004. Chef Robin is a skilled and passionate teacher and chef. And it is my honor and pleasure to introduce to you today, Chef Robin Maii, who will be sharing with you the flavors of Hawaii and one of her favorite ingredients, kompachi. Hi. Hello. Hi, good morning. It is about seven o'clock in Honolulu. Um, I'm very, very excited to be here with you. Um, getting used to the whole video situation. So thank you for um, being here. And um, I wanted to share with you one of my favorite ingredients. It is uh, Kona Kampachi. It is part of the Jack family, Amber Jack. Um, and it is a um, Hamachi hybrid. So one of the reasons why we love this fish is because it's a very, very delicious fish. It has, it's fattier than let's say mahi-mahi. Um, not as fatty as hamachi. So it's kind of like the best of both worlds. It's also a very, very forgiving fish, meaning that um, you really have to work hard to uh, make it, to, to screw it up. Okay, so we really, really, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a very forgiving fish. And so we, we really, really try to respect it and honor it. Um, this guy is probably about, I don't know, four, three, three pounds. Um, you can see he's nice and fat. Um, and <clears throat> just like how you learn in school, what you're looking for is clear eyes and well, 
I asked them to take the gills out. So you can't see the red gills because they're gone, but the flesh is nice and firm. Um, it is not, it's, it's very, very matte. So there's like no slime at all. Um, it smells like the ocean, nice and salty. Um, and that's, that's, it fits, it, this was actually just out of the water yesterday and it arrived yesterday. So we're very lucky to get such fresh fish. Okay, so I'm going to break this down for you. And today I'm gonna to show you how to prepare kampachi three ways um, and we use everything. So let's start. And this is a round fish, okay? So I'm just gonna start at its forehead. and then come down the dorsal. Make a little incision by the tail. And then one of the great things about um, these, these fish, just like the um, hamachi is this beautiful collar. Um, and depending upon how busy the restaurant is, we'll order whole fish and do the fabrication ourselves or we'll order fillets. It just depends on how busy we are. And we like to take the skin off the kampachi. I'm cutting on the belly side. This is the collar. So if you go to like a, a Japanese restaurant, they're, they, they will broil this, the nice little triangle. They'll broil it and then brush it with kabayaki sauce. Um, it's really, really tasty. But you can see how small this is compared to the hamachi collars. Um, since we, since they're so little, we don't typically serve this. Um, and so we save it for um, a cook's treat and we do a family meal. We collect the collars and we do a family meal with this, this piece. Okay, so now I'm at, go down the, the dorsal side and this is the belly side. And now we're right by the rib cage. So, I'm just going to take my knife and cut right, right through the ribs. And then I'm going to take the fillet off. This is also a really nice fish for um, students to learn on because it's, it's quite clean inside. So you can see how easy that was. Okay, so now I have this one side here. Um, I am going to cut off the ribs now and I'm using my knife really, really close to the ribs because we're gonna save the belly for one of our applications. Okay, so this is the ribs. So we collect the ribs and then the, um, the carcass and then we'll make some fish stock later. Okay, so now I'm left, took the rib off and there is a fattier side and a skinnier side and then there's the belly. But um, I am going to cut off the belly now. And this we're going to salt and um, I'm gonna come back to that later, but we're gonna salt this. And now I can still, because there's bones all along this area, I know that sometimes people like to take the pin bones out, but I am simply going to cut down the middle. And I'm going to do this side. This is so I'm cutting out the center 
bones. And then now I have two sides. So I'm going to take the skin off of both sides. Nothing gets wasted in our kitchen. So we use the trim for our chia pino soup. One side. And then our other side. So I make my, I cut off a little bit just to give myself a tab and then I can grab the skin. Okay. All right. So now I have the skinny side and the fat side. And at FET, because we are so, we're always concerned about food waste and food cost. Everything gets weighed out. Um, a portion for our entree will be about five ounces. Um, and then we also use this for sandwiches, which will be about four and a half ounces. And um, we also use it for um, tataki or sashimi style. And we usually our portions about three and a half ounces. So I am going to, today we're gonna make three things. We're going to make a kampachi fritter. We are going to make kampachi sandwich, a grilled kampachi sandwich. And we're going to do a uh, kampachi tataki, um, which is like seared and then um, mostly raw. So you can see, I wanted to show you the diversity of this fish. Okay. So let's go back to the bellies. Okay. So I have more belly here. And one more belly here. And what we're going to do, let's change my gloves. Okay, so we get a pan and we salt cure the bellies for about two days, two or three days. Okay, more salt. So the fritters was inspired by Spanish fritters using bacalao. And bacalao is salted cod. And so we thought, why not? Why don't we just sort of like do something similar? So we take the bellies, we salt it. After all the moisture gets drawn out, we air dry it in the, in the fridge, in the walk-in for a little bit. And then afterwards we um, gently simmer it and it's, it's just delicious, okay? I'm gonna change my gloves again. Okay. So we're gonna work on the fritters first, but let me actually finish fabricating this guy. Fritters is coming with a harissa aioli, and harissa is a North African chili paste. And the hallmark flavor in harissa, there's cumin and there's coriander, but the hallmark flavor is caraway. does have a little bit of garlic and of course chilies, but we make our own here. Uh, 
Hi, Chef. We, we do have a question from the audience, not directly related to the exact skill that you're doing, but um, the students who are tuning in, you know, see that, you know, you're, you've, you've won awards, you, you own your own restaurant, and they're wondering how you got your start in the culinary industry and, um, you know, may, maybe what set you up for success. Oh, um, when I was finishing my bachelor degree, everybody was running around trying to um, figure out what they're going to do next, including going to grad school or taking a job as a consultant um, in a big company. And I just kept on thinking about food. And I saw a brochure for the New England Culinary Institute at the career office, and it really resonated. I like I fixated it and I said, oh, my God. I'm going to go to culinary school, and then I and then I realized how expensive culinary school was is. So I had to come home and go to um, Capulet Com Community College because my parents wouldn't pay for my education any longer. And um, yeah, I went to KCC and it was awesome. It um, I feel like people shouldn't spend a lot of money in on on culinary education. I think that community college programs are the best. Um, and uh, because we all know that when you go into industry, you don't make, you don't start off making a lot of money. So you have to, you know, there's that balance of like getting a good education, but then also affording, um, affording your education, paying back your loans, paying rent. So that's how I got started at KCC. And there's hey, Chef Emily and say hi. This is Chef Emily. She's our chef de cuisine. And she also went to um, KCC with me. No, not with, I mean, sorry, different times, but same school. Okay. Um, I'm going to portion, do a portion for the sandwich. Okay. Great. Perfect. This is for the sandwich. And... We'll take these two to do the tataki. Let me trim this off. Okay. okay, so that's that. And then we talked about the bellies for the um, the uh, the fritter. Okay. So. We're going to make the fritter dough. So the fritters is the salt cured bellies that have been cooked, simmered, and that's what's in here. We're going to actually, um, it's sort of like a um, brandade, which is a salt cod potato um, French dip, um, Spanish mashup with some pate choux, which is a choux paste or cream, cream puff paste. But we have to make our goodies. I call it the goodies first. So this is a, this is gonna make a large batch because we're actually making it for the restaurant. But this is the, a lot of bellies that have been cooked. And here are some Yukon potatoes that have been cooked in rice. Okay, and then we have garlic that I microplaned, and then we have lots of parsley. So at that, we use a lot of fresh herbs. Okay, so this is my this is my um, my base, my goodie base. And because we're using a salted fish, I am not going to season it until we make until we taste the the dough at the end because the kampachi, the salted kampachi, has a lot of salt. Okay. okay so I am going to you're going to move with me to the um, the induction burner. 
And inside the pot, we have um, butter and water. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that this this liquid here comes to a rolling boil. And that's so the fat is dispersed through the liquid um, evenly. And the liquid, depending upon, you can use milk, you can use half milk, half water, but because, because this is um, a savory shoe, we're just using water. But again, you want it to come to a rolling boil. It's almost there. Chef, one of the students tuning in was wondering um, that as a, a woman chef, um, if you've experienced any barriers in your career um, in, in the field that they're about to enter. Sorry, Jackie, what was the first part of the question? Uh, one of the students was wondering that, um, have you experienced any uh, barriers as a woman in the profession that the student is looking to go into? Um, you know, it's, those of you who know me know that I'm super honest. So the answer is yes, it, it was very hard um, starting off in kitchens. I was often the only woman in the kitchen. Um, somebody told me very early on that I would have to work twice as hard. Um, they were right. Um, and it's, you know, it's difficult because it's a very physical job. It's a very, very cerebral job. A lot of people think that cooking isn't like, oh, I'm not, I'm not academically sound, so I'm not, like, I'm gonna cook, but um, it is hard to cook well every single day and consistently. So, um, and then, you know, being sexually harassed almost on a daily basis in one of my jobs was like really, really rough. It's kind of why I stopped cooking. Um, but, you know, once, once, once you have a love for cooking, you, you always find yourself back in the kitchen. So that's why we opened up that. Okay, it's boiling. You see? Okay. Now we're gonna add all of our flour. This is bread flour because we want the well, we want the extra structure. I'm gonna cut the heat off. I'm gonna stir. This is a very stiff spoon. I'm gonna stir this. And I know there are a lot of students um, watching and everybody does things differently. As you go through your career, even if, when you go from class to class, you're gonna, the, the chef is going to teach you how to do a skill and you do it the way they tell you to do it. That's the rule because there's many, many ways to do the same task. Okay, so do you see it's like homogeneous now? I'm gonna turn the induction burner back on and I'm just gonna cook this a little bit to get some of the residual moisture cooked out. Okay, so like when you learn in culinary school, this is a twice cooked dough. It's quite magical. Um, I've, I, I've lost count how many times I've made pat de choux and it, it amazes me every single time. If, if you continue to be enthralled by things that you cook on a day-to-day on a -day basis, that means you're gonna be successful. If the task seems boring to you, then I don't know if this is the, this is the, this is the job for you or the industry for you. Okay, so you see all this, I don't know if you can see the steam coming up. Okay. All right, now we're gonna go to the mixer. So I'm gonna get all the dough into the mixer. Half 
paddle attachment. Okay. Want to make sure we're not on the high. Okay, so now I have the paddle going. And we're going to add our eggs. Let's actually go. Teach you. Okay. All right, here we go. So when I when I used to teach this culinary school, I would make the students do it by hand. So you don't want to add all the eggs at one time because you need you need the um, to give the the shoe time to absorb the liquid but this is a, this is a big mixer so it's it's working fast she was very forgiving as well meaning that you can, once you make the dough you can actually like pipe it pre-bake it and then freeze the, the, the big dough. You can even freeze raw shoe dough. So look, I don't know if you can see that, it's nice and shiny. Now I'm going to add my goodies, okay? So remember, this is the potatoes, the salted compachi, parsley, and garlic. Okay, I love parsley. It freshens everything up. Pars fresh herbs and acid. Okay. Okay. Close this again. Give this. Fantastic. So I'm actually just going to take some of this mixture. Let's see. And we're going to take it, we're going to cook some of it upstairs. And then we'll. We're going to take this with us. Okay, but first, we are going to make the harissa aioli. Okay, so everybody wants to know like what the food is like at FET. We do New American, which gives us the liberty to cook whatever we want to eat. We like to use local ingredients as much as possible, but we also have favorite ingredients like Hellman's best food mayonnaise we love. Okay, so we're gonna take the mayonnaise. Okay. And then this is our harissa paste. You see. All right. Okay, and then we're just going to whisk it together. Okay. 
looks great. Okay, that is delicious. All right, um, we are ready to go upstairs. We're ready to go upstairs. Okay, let's see. Okay, so I didn't tell you we're in the basement of FET. This is where the walk-in is and the prep area. And now we're gonna go upstairs to the kitchen. Do I need my knife? I need my knife. Oh. Okay. So let's do the first. So that is in the heart of Chinatown. And we see about 65 people if the whole restaurant is that. We do a very busy lunch and we have all day menu and a very busy dinner. But there, we have two people that have everything in the morning and we do uh, lunch service. And then the three people at night that do about anywhere from 120 to 180 covers. Okay, we're going to go to the fryer. All right, so 100%. Chef, we love that we're able to see the whole behind the scenes at your restaurant too. This is such a treat. Five balls, right? Yeah, five balls? Yeah, five balls. Okay, five balls are ordered. Okay, we're Chef, we do have a question about what type of oil that you're using. Okay. And then I'm going to go here and roll this in.
so that was some olive oil. We love to use olive oil in this kitchen. I love Italian and French food. I mean, we love all kinds of food, but we really love Italian and French food. So,
The flesh is like pink white. Lettuce. For me, 
each has hard cooked egg in it, cornichons with those small little pickles. Horseradish, lots of dill. Ooh. Do you see that? How succulent it is? Oh my God, so good. It's so good. Sashimi, tataki, kudo style. We have our salted bellies that we turned into a, um, like a Spanish fritter. And then we have it simply grilled um, pachi sandwich with rubish. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this all looks incredible. I wish I could just jump through the screen right now. Absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. And thank you so much for bringing us into your kitchen, into your prep spaces, and really giving us a, a great look at all, all that you do and in introducing us to this, uh, all these great techniques for, for Kampachi. Um, really, really appreciate it. Chef, we do have a couple of questions, if you if you don't mind. Um, uh, one of them is from a school that's tuning in that um, is outside of Hawaii. They've never been to Hawaii and they're wondering if you might be able to speak to what some of the local ingredients or dishes might be like or what really sort of defines Hawaiian cuisine. I think what defines Hawaii is the, it's our nice weather. So um, we have the ability, we basically have, it's like summer here all day long. So what that, what that does mean is that we don't get a lot of um, like colder crops cabbage is harder, artichokes, um, Belgian endives, that kind of thing. But then everything else we have from tomatoes to onions, to all the greens, to all the cruciferous vegetables. We have the freshest fish and most delicious fish, I think, in, in the world. Um, and right now, as far as like proteins, we can get everything in Hawaii. We source local pork, beef, Veal, lamb, chicken, eggs. Um, so essentially, almost oh, venison, coffee, um, coffee, chocolate, uh, vanilla beans. We have actually someone that grows our vanilla beans for us. It, it, it is pretty remarkable. Um, I would probably say. 90% of our proteins are local. And I would say 85 to 90% of our produce is local. So we, we really we really like to support um, the other businesses. And um, it's also really good eating. But you know, we buy, our olive oil comes from Italy. So it's not like we're like super, super strict about it. Although we do have, we do have an investor who is now pressing their own olive oil in Maui, which is like amazing. And it's not bad, it's pretty good. So, sounds amazing, oh my goodness. Um, we were also wondering um, if you had or have a culinary mentor um, and um, how that might have uh, potentially helped in your career. Um, I have I, I have many culinary mentors. Um, Russell, who I who I mentioned earlier, 
Martin, my first chef. Um, my culinary mentor from culinary school is Chef Kabakugan. Um, I had the pleasure of having him for three classes, which was like really, really unusual at the time. Um, but he introduced me to Sever Magazine. He um, let me come in early every single day to do more than the curriculum was designed for. Um, I have many, many, many cookbook heroes. Uh, they're all, they happen to be all women. Um, I love Judy Rogers. Um, I love Modern Joffrey. I love Alice Waters. I love, of course, I love Julia Child. Um, in fact, I was so nervous about this uh, this demo, and I'm like, I just told my husband, like, I'm just gonna Julia Child, Child it. Just like things are gonna fall, and just like whatever. Um, I love Claudia Rodin. I love Paula Wolford. So all these um, Diana Kennedy, all these amazing, amazing women who um, consider themselves cooks first. Um, and sure, we can throw around the word chef, but these are women who like to, who are really, really love to cook delicious food for their friends and family. So that's kind of how we approach it here at Beth. Sure. Well, great. And and uh, now a, a, a new list of authors that some uh, students or professionals can also yeah, uh, look into. Writing down the authors like. <laughs> I bet I bet they were. Um, another uh, viewer is wondering if you've experienced um, any seafood shortages and if that's um, or any supply chain issues that have affected your menus. Um, that's really interesting because because we are we are in the middle of the Pacific. Um, Hawaii always has in the best of times we always have supply um, challenges. Um, so when the pandemic happened. I don't want to say it really didn't affect us in terms of supply chain, but um, the way our sense of our cooking sensibility here is we cook what we can get our hands on. So everyone, and I think that that's really important for culinary students to understand is the adaptability. Um, you hear these stories about like, and I don't mean to like disparage chefs, but like you hear these stories about like chefs like flying off the handle because they didn't get X right because it's on their menu i just we don't cook that way so if we don't have it then we won't cook it we'll just we'll cook what's available so and i think that that's that's something that is unique to how emily and i run the kitchen is we're not going to make ourselves crazy we're going to make do with what we have on hand and that's what our families do that is what we do so Sounds, a little bit. Of, of course it did. I I I, cer I certainly think so. Remain adaptable. That's the that that is it right there. Um, and then um, one of the other questions was about when you're hiring uh, cooks or sous chefs or anyone in the back of the house. What's the number one important skill that they have, hard or soft skill? Oh. Oh. Do we have another hour? <laughs> okay. I swear, Emily and I talk about this every day. What are we looking for? We're looking for a positive attitude. We're looking for someone who is kind. We're looking for someone who is generous. We're looking for someone that can um, problem solve. We're looking for someone who's curious and who has a good work ethic. Whoa. Mind you, I didn't even say anything about the cooking yet. Right. So all those things matter to us because if you don't come with those things, quite frankly, your cooking skills don't matter to me. So if you come with those things and you happen to be a good cook, that's like bonus. But we've had better luck teaching people how to cook that possess those those qualities then trying to trying to teach someone to be generous and kind is an uphill battle yes absolutely i always call it the hospitality heart you you have it yes. or you don't and, and in this in this restaurant everything is house first we take care of the house first because if we can't take care of the house then we have no hope for the guests 
so we we really think we have a we have a really just a very nice work environment for our back of the house. The back of the house and front of the house get along very nicely. Um, we set up the the kitchen very differently. So we've worked in a lot of kitchens where it's just like this is my prep and this is like my station. We are so busy um, that we completely turned half kitchen, like the kitchen brigade, upside down. So we organize the kitchen based on tasks, not on station. It allows us to be more efficient um, and it lets us get more things done with fewer people. Great. Ex excellent answer. I think it certainly speaks to the culture that that you've cultivated in in your space. Um, and then I guess right, you know, I could speak with you all day long, I would love to, but I, we're coming up on the end. I'm wondering if you had any final words or final thoughts for the culinary community that's tuning in today. Um, final thoughts, Chef Emily? Go back to what I was saying, like downstairs, is that, um, you know, Emily and I, we do the same things every day. And it's never dull. There's never a dull moment, especially if you're working with local ingredients that farmers actually like raise. And so maybe they're ugly, but they're still delicious. Um, you have to be able to adapt. Things come smaller, bigger, fattier, leaner, sweeter, sour, more sour. <laughs> so. Well, that, that is perfect. So I think that's going to be our exclamation point at the end that to be adaptable is the secret to um, much of your, much of your success. And of course, the passion for what you do and, and uh, we just couldn't thank you enough for sharing your time, for getting up so early, um, and um, and for everything today. So thank you so much, Chef. I'm just going to go into a couple of last minute announcements, but we will certainly hope to see you again soon. Um, and a, a huge virtual round of applause from our audience here. Chef, uh, we uh, really appreciate you taking the time to share the passion. It's coming through the screen and your enthusiasm for your craft with the chefs and food service professionals and students who are tuning in today. So um, even though I'm not from Hawaii, I will say uh, mahalo, Chef Robin, for sharing today. Please be on the lookout for a survey that you'll receive shortly, which you'll need to complete in order to earn your speech. Please remember um, that we have some uh, other upcoming webinars that might be of interest to you. On November 11th, we have an important session for you and your teams on how to put diversity, equity, inclusion principles into action in your kitchens. On November 14th, we have a presentation panel about how to optimize your kitchen for virtual dining and delivery success. So you can check out wearechefs.com to sign up for any of our upcoming webinars this fall. In fact, we just added a gingerbread techniques um, webinar just in time for the holidays. We had a great time at ACF National Convention this summer, so we hope that you will join us in New Orleans, July 16th through the 19th. You can go to acfchefs.org, the events tab to register to join us. So on behalf of the ACF National Office, thank you again to uh, the Hawaii Culinary Education Foundation for supporting this great session and for connecting us with Chef Maii. And of course, thank you to Chef Robin for this great learning opportunity. And thank you all for tuning in today. Of course, if you're in Honolulu, please make a point to dine at FET and support Chef. Thank you all and see you soon. <laughs>